Hello, my name is Jason J. Rock Houston. You guys are listening to an interview being done for Under the Influence tonight. It's my great pleasure to be once again speaking with my good friend Rocco Fonzarelli. And um, Rocco, um, you're of course from the um, band's uh, uh, Kiss Coed, or Coed Kiss, excuse me, and um, Zombiewood. And also, um, before we um, get in, uh, much further into the interview tonight, uh, you have a new project you wanted to announce. Well, it's officially named. Uh the, the male kiss band, not the co-ed, but okay. the male. And, uh, yeah, the official name is the Kiss Crusaders. So, with a K. Okay. With a K. <laughs> well, well um, so, like I said, now now that you've got that announced, um, could you share with us who are um, the other members in the band? Sure. Uh, it's Raleigh DeVore um, as Peter Chris. Um, Larry Hampton as Ace Freely. Uh, myself as Gene Simmons, and um, at the moment we are borrowing Rob Valentine from Las Vegas. Wow! wow. As Paul Stanley. So, um, yeah, as, at the moment um, we're we're continually looking for a local Paul, uh -huh. but you know until then um, all of our shows seem to be flyouts at the moment. So, um, so yeah, we're going to Texas. For Halloween. Wow, wow, wow. That's always fun. That's always fun, yeah. And, um, so. and, and what has been the toughest part for you in um, finding your Paul? I mean, have you auditioned other guys and it's just a matter of the right guy hasn't come aboard yet? Yeah, you know, I think um, Raleigh puts the best. He all he says, you know, Paul family is a tough order. <laughs> you know, you have to look good. You have to sing, like, really good. And the physical activity that goes along with it. I mean, just, you know, I, I always look at it as Paul is kind of the ringleader and Gene is kind of the circus sideshow, you know? Yeah, yeah. So, so uh, yeah, just getting a good ringleader. I mean, Rob does a really good job, but we kind of need someone local if we're going to do local stuff. So, um, you know, the agency has been very helpful. Our agency has been very helpful, like, looking out for us and getting a few names thrown in the pot. There. And, and I, I got to ask um, you, I got to ask you about that, Rocco, because you're telling me that was the hardest thing in putting this project together is um, coming up with a name because there's thousands of Kiss tributes and practically every album title or song title has been taken. So how did you come up with Kiss Crusaders? That's a pretty cool name. Um, <laughs> it's a long story, but in a nutshell, we were going for... We're going to talk about, you know, the, the movie um, Scooby-Doo with um, Kiss, Kiss. Yeah. But um, we wanted to go, I, I, and this has always been a desire of mine as well, we wanted to go kind of the route of, the route of um, more of the cartoon aspect of, of Kiss. We yeah. wanted to kind of Kiss Meets the Fan, like, uh, kind of, like, just image, if that makes sense. So Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, you know, having that kind of the superhero side, the, the Comic-Con side, if you will. Mm -hmm. So, and, the, you know, the Marvel comic kind of thing. So that's kind of going to be our logo as far as I can, like, at the moment. Well, um, and, yeah, we're, we just kind of went with that. So, um, you know, Crusader was kind of like, you know, the Caped Crusader. Cool, cool. I like, I dig that. <laughs> yeah, I dig that. Wow, wow. <laughs> and and so, yeah, so, yeah, so the next... The next obvious question is, okay, you also got um, co-ed Kiss. Now, do you worry that um, that you're going to have um, trouble booking gigs for both bands, you know, or one's going to get more gigs over the other? Uh, no, you know, I think at this point, like, we're all just, you know, for me it's more of the celebration of the music. Uh -huh. So it's not going to hurt my feelings if, say, co-ed gets a show and Kiss Crusaders don't or vice versa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, it, you know, because the girls from co-ed, they're pretty busy as well with Chris. Yeah. So they're on the road. So, you know, it's just, it's whatever the client wants, really. I mean, it's just, for me, it's the celebration of, you know, it's the thing of being able to leave people in a, in a great kiss sing-along. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, that's so, that's cool. And now, um, as you know, Rocco, the, the main reason we're um, doing the interview tonight is um, I thought it'd be a cool idea, um, since you are such a huge Kiss fan, um, as I am, to talk about um, the Scooby-Doo and Kiss movie that was released, I think, back in July. And um, I, I've had a chance to watch it myself, and I thought it was a pretty cool 
thing for what it was. What, what, what was your thoughts when you initially saw this? Um, you know what? I was really, actually, I was really skeptical. I thought, okay, how am I going to, my first thought when it was, how am I going to buy, like, Tommy Thayer and Eric Singer as Peter Chris and Ace Freely? And that they kept it um, with, you know, Spaceman and yeah. Catman or whatever, that was really good. Like, it, it didn't, after the initial shock that, oh, yeah, Peter Chris and Ace Freely aren't going to be in this, um, it was, it, it went really well. Like, I was like, I mean, and you know what? I don't have anything, I don't want to just be clear. Like, I don't have anything against Tommy Thayer or Eric Singer being in the band. I, I've always been, you know, whatever, Raleigh always says, whatever version of Kiss, you know, there is, you know, that will, I'll like it and he'll like it. I mean, so I didn't have, a, have after the initial introduction of the characters, um, I was on board and it was great. I thought it was great. Yeah, see, see, the the thing I loved about this is the fact that it was animated, and like I talked with you several times before, Kiss to me, um, the great thing about Kiss, especially in makeup, is Kiss has always been more than just a rock band. You know, they they they've really become a part of pop culture. And like like you're saying, I mean, this is more than just you know the guys in the band. I mean, like you said, it's the Catman, the Demon, the the Spaceman, the Star Child. And um, those iconic, those iconic figures, and you know, um, Paul and Gene have even, um, you know, been joking around the last few years that when they're finally ready to retire, they they fully intend to keep Kiss going, um, and, and and you know, hire their own replacements. So what do you think about that? <laughs> um, you know, I don't, I don't know how that will play out, but you know, like I said, I mean, you know, it's just sort of a. I mean, it, at this point, it's more than a band, like you said. I mean, it's it's pretty much an American institution. So, you know, um, people, I, I had my doubts when Van Halen got a new singer, yeah. and he seemed to work out pretty well for a while, and, you know, new members come and go, you know? See, so, Kiss you know, yeah. I, I think I, I think if they stay true to their character, yeah. like the last Kiss album, my favorite song was actually the Tommy Thayer song. Um, yeah. So off of Monster, I mean, I thought that was, um, yeah. Uh, besides Hell or Hallelujah, I thought yeah. that was the strongest uh, song on the album. So I'm sure they're gonna do great. I mean, you know. Yeah, and you know, the, the, the kids, like you said, I mean, the, these are like iconic figures. They're, they really have become, um, you know, pop culture. And um, I mean, that's why. I mean, unless you're a diehard fan, you know, you can tell the voice of Gene Simmons and even um, you know Eric Singer and Tommy Thayer. Um, you know, they, they could have hired, you know, character actors, but I think it gives it a little more authenticity having the actual guys, you know, do their voice. And I don't so much have a problem with um, Tommy and Eric in the band for the simple fact that, um, in spite of what a lot of fans think, I mean, they, they've never tried to, you know, um, fool anybody into believing it was Peter Chris or Ace Fraley. They've always told people from a get, no, this is Eric and this is Tommy. And e even Eric, you know, um, I give him a little more... Um, you know, right to be doing what he's doing for a simple fact. You know, he was in a non-makeup uh, version of Kiss, you know, back when, um, you know, Revenge first came out back in um, 1992. So, you know, he's been with the band for, you know, you know, even longer. Yeah. And, and uh, Revenge is probably one of my favorite, if not my favorite, non-makeup mm -hmm. albums. I mean, uh, just great timing. All the songs were written really well, just, probably one of the strongest Kiss albums possibly ever, you know, that they ever put out. I mean, there was nothing wrong with Revenge. So yeah, I mean, I... <laughs> I mean, I, I put that I put that up with, right up there with you know uh, Destroyer, but of course that's another um, Kiss and Bob Ezrin uh, collaboration. I, I love anything that Bob Ezrin ever you know puts his hands on. You know, but getting back to the movie, you know, um, when I first saw this Scooby Doo and Kiss um, animated movie, initially um, when, I, when I, I went back to you know 1978, the very first time I saw Kiss meets the Phantom, and Kiss meets the Phantom, you know, it's interesting you brought that up earlier. earlier um, that's one of those movies that um, I gotta say I still love it for what you know what it is all these years later. But if you compare the two um, movies, um, I think you know Kiss meets the Phantom. It's a little more campy. You can kind of it's a little more dated. You can kind of tell it was filmed back in the '70s. But I, I think they're both great pictures. But uh, but I I really love the Scooby Doo thing because you know besides Kiss, you got you know 
uh, another pop culture icon, you know, like Scooby Doo in there, and and they 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 just mix so well. And I think my favorite part about the Scooby Doo movie was actually the the Doc McGee character. I mean, he was so spot on. I, I thought. Yeah, that was really funny, and that they had uh, known vo- actors and voice actors yeah. um, recording some of the other characters. Uh, it was uh, uh, what's his name, um, Kevin Smith yeah. and. Um, Penny Marshall, I mean, really cool. Like, that was really cool. Um, and the people's voice, you recognize it right away, too. Um, I love how they tied in, like, all the kind of uh, just speculation over the years, you know, about their, um, just all the things that you thought when you were a kid, mm-hmm. they kind of brought out in that. But I gotta tell you, my favorite part was um, something that someone pointed out to me after the fact. Uh, there's a, there's, they're flipping through a book or something, and yeah. there's a, the page with all the all the different, um, all the characters and all the uh, members of Kiss that have come and gone <laughs> um, are in this book, and they have their little symbols like right, you know Vinnie Vincent and Eric Carr, Mark St. John. Um, uh, I mean, that was really cool. Yeah, and see, that's like, that's that's all right there. Unless you're, you know, a diehard Kiss fan, you might not pick up on. But, you know, again, you know, talking about both um, the Scooby Doo movie and Kiss Meets the Phantom, uh, I mean, both both movies. The thing that really I, I picked up on, like you right away, is how iconic these figures are. I mean, I mean, in Kiss Meets the Phantom, we had, you know, the, the, the talisman, and they they had these they had these strange powers and stuff, and you know. That's an interesting thing. Like when I when I uh, go back and I think about when I first got into the music of Kiss, I remember as a kid thinking, "Wow, you know." When I seen the, a picture of a guy in makeup for the first time, I thought, "Wow, you know, these are these are cool looking monsters. They're superheroes." And then you know, eventually, when you find out they made a comic book and they use their real blood in the ink. I mean, I mean, what other bands have uh, have done stuff like that? You know? Yeah, and then I mean, I don't think there'll ever be another you know Kiss. I mean. Yeah. It, it goes, you know, I mean, there's, you know, they, they just, it, the commercialization of hand-in-hand you know, hand with the music, uh, it just, you know, it just works every, in, on every level. I mean, um, I, you know, I don't have a problem, like, people, I, I, I recall fans saying things like, you know, you know, Gene's ruining the brand name and, you know, all the, all the things that come along with the critics that, you know, but... You know, once once you've done like hit the top, I mean, you know, they kind of sat back and went, "Where do we go from here?" Okay, well, let's try this, and you know, they've been been pretty successful in every avenue that they've taken. I, I and, mean, uh, I mean, when you consider a fact, okay, they they've got over twenty something albums, and so that, they got to have at least you know over four or five hundred. You know, just studio songs that, that on those albums. So when when you stop and think, somebody's written that many, you know. Um, that many songs have been played on the radio. That many songs are, you know, that well known. That many hit singles. You know, um, you know, it's amazing that they're still able to write, you know, new material. Let alone come up with new ideas uh, as far as you know, merchandise and different things to sell. Yeah, and marketing. And what was the the, the album with the Japanese pop? Was it Japanese or actually there's two, some sort of Asian pop? Yeah, you know. Hotter than hell, hotter than hell, and I think Crazy Night said that little Japanese sign. Oh, uh, there was some other pop group that they had recorded with recently. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I, I can't think of the name, but I know what you're talking about. Yeah, I've seen. That. I was reading about that on the internet. Yes. So you know, just those little those things. I mean, what what a way to. I mean, it must be just. I mean, they've hit every you know uh, milestone that they it's shot for so it's like well, what do you do next okay well let's try this and I, that's just really cool but getting back to the movie I mean so I'm watching it uh, you sent me a copy by the way the day it came out yeah. it was, I got it I think the day after it came out put it in with very low expectations and I was pretty much blown away I mean I thought this is so much fun I mean I, I tried, they used the 70s kind of background music from the, like, original Scooby Doo, yeah. which I thought was really cool. Um, they have, you know, known voice actors and, and people who you recognize right away. Um, the comedy was there. Uh, the music, of course, was there. I mean, it was just, there was nothing not to like about it. And I can't imagine you know, any critic, you know, uh, you know, 
being harsh. I could see, you know, Kiss Me for Sam, there were, mm-hmm. there was, you know, critics may have given it a hard time, but the production value, I mean, there was nothing not to like about it, so... Yeah, and, and you know the, the other interesting thing about um, talking about Kiss Meets the Phantom in this one is um, I didn't realize at first that they were both, um, you know, being that Scooby Doo is Hanna Barbera, but they're both Han- yeah. both involved with Hanna Barbera. So that's kind of an interesting connection that they both have. And like you said, um, in the Scooby Doo movie, there's like six classic Kiss songs, and from what I understand. They were not re-recorded um, with Eric and Tommy. They were just the original recordings. And then, I don't know if you caught a Rocco, but um, there is a new like original song in there. It's it's a little short uh, song, but with all the guys like doing a vocal part. And um, it, it's called something my ask off or something. But um, that's a little oh, yeah. one of those little East, <laughs> Easter egg things that you'll find if you if you look for it. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Yeah. Yeah, and you know, I'll, I'll predict, I'll make a prediction right now. Yeah. I think they should redo Kiss Me for Phantom of the Park yeah. animated, and it would be amazing. Oh, yeah. A little rewrite, a little animation, and it's awesome. So you see, and, and, and too, when you, when you I, again, I like Kiss Meets the Phantom for what it is, and, and, and I, I was probably a bigger fan when I was a kid and I first seen it for the first time. I will say when I watched it in later years, it, it is kind of dated, and you can kind of tell, okay, it was filmed in the 70s, but for what it was, I think it still holds up. But the only thing is that, like, when, when I was a kid and I saw it for the first time, you know, I really didn't notice certain things like I pick up on now, like the fact that you can tell that... that it was not Peter Chris's voice, and then come to find out, it's a black guy actually doing his voice. And then you got, <laughs> and then you, then you got uh, them lip lip singing some of the songs in the movie, and you got a different guy doing Ace's voice, some of Ace's voice. So um, it, it's kind of interesting uh, when you go back and you watch that movie again. You pick up on these little things that you might not have initially picked up on. Whereas the Scooby Doo movie, like I said, um, you know, you do have actual the actual guys voicing their voices. Um, it's, it comes across as a little more um, authentic. They don't have um, like they don't have somebody else doing Eric Singer's voice or anything like that. So I think um, the Scooby Doo one comes across as a little more authentic. If you know what I mean? Yeah, I'm with you on that. I mean, that was just great. I mean, it's so good. Yeah, and, and and I think it's interesting too because um, I've been I've been reading some interviews the guys have done over the years talking about Kiss Me the Phantom where we're saying you know um, you know at this point Gene and Paul have done some acting now but um, at that time in 1978 none of the guys had ever done any acting and they're kind of learning how to you know read the lines and all that and remember everything as as they were doing the filming and um, a lot of stuff was just written as they were doing where you can tell there had to have been actual uh, script for the Scooby Doo thing for they actually. Um, went in and recorded their parts. Yeah. Uh, and, and, you know, um, it came off... I mean, when you're a kid and you're watching Kissing the Phantom, like you said, absolutely right. None of that... You saw nothing. All you saw was kisses on TV and they're fighting a bad guy and it was awesome, you know? Um, and you kind of felt for the character, too, because, you know, they framed Gene yeah. and... Uh, Oh, it's a real part of that, you know what I mean? And so you're like, oh, no, you know, how's he going to get out of this? How's he going to prove it? It's really him. So, you know, I, I watched, actually, Kiss Me for Phantom um, recently as well. And, you know, just watching it. Like, I never picked up on how many songs that they used um, in, like, from the solo albums. Like, um, Mr. Make Believe and They Have a Thousand Faces and... Uh, well, you, yeah, you know, you know, what's interesting about that is, I know that there, there's different versions, there's different versions oh, yeah. of the movie floating around. Because I believe when the, when they originally filmed that, I think part of it was filmed nineteen, um, late part of nineteen seventy seven because it came out in seventy eight, and a lot of the songs ended up being on um, the double platinum album. And then because because I, I I've heard them talking about that when the film was being made, that was when. Um, Ace and Peter were really threatening, okay, we're going to leave and go and have a solo career, and that's w- w- where they got the idea to do the solo. So I think, you know, a couple of years um, after the movie had already been out, I- I'd understood that um, they'd re-edited the movie and-, and added some of those songs into there. So um, that's another little interesting uh, tidbit. <laughs> Absolutely. I-, I remember, because I remember there are certain parts that I remember as a kid are not in the version that I have now which was from Kissology, too, or whatever. I remember specifically, 
the lines that are missing. Yeah. And I was like, wait a minute, that's not what happened there. You know, so there's seven, that's why I think there's if there's one called you know Kiss Me the Phantom, there's one called Phantom of the Park, there's one called something else. Well, it was originally so called Kiss Me. Kiss Meets the Phantom of the Park, and um, I think like in the early 80s, um, I, I'd heard um, they'd released it in other parts of the world that had never um, gone it before. I, I remember people selling like bootleg copies like, and calling it Attack of the Phantoms, and like you said, the, the main right. difference was some of these songs had been um, added to the soundtrack that were not originally in the original um, version, and I also know that... Um, I, I remember, I forget what song it was, but there was a, if you remember, they had a, a, the real kiss and the fake kiss and the kiss meets the phantom, and, um, yeah, and, and they, they had some song, like, um, that they made up, rip, rip, rip and destroy, that had never been yeah, on. Yeah, it was hotter than hell, that's hilarious. Yeah, 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 yeah. I hear the music of it now. And, and so again, you know, th- uh, we're just two Kiss fans here talking about, about these two <laughs> different, um. Kiss movies, but but again, that's that's not something you can really do with, you know. And I was um, doing an interview recently, uh, Rocco, with somebody else, and, and uh, we were also discussing the fact that okay, what other what other band besides Kiss? I mean, um, I remember reading when uh, Dimebag Daryl died that Gene and Paul had sent the family um, a Kiss cast to bury him in, and I mean, you know, just think about that. He was an ultimate, you know, one of the ultimate Kiss fans, and to be buried in a Kiss casket, how cool is that? <laughs> to literally. <laughs> be buried with your favorite band, if you know what I mean. <laughs> That's so funny. That is so weird. <laughs> I don't think I'd want that, but... Uh, yeah, I mean, I mean but, it, it just, it makes you kind of think of the, you know, audacity of the whole thing, and, you know, like you are saying earlier, a lot of people, they rag on Gene and Paul for merchandising the band, they, like they have, but, but, but what I say to that is, okay, if you had the opportunity to have a, a, a band, and, and you could do the same thing, who would not do it, you know? <laughs> Oh, of course, and yeah, that's, that's where the... And then, you know, and, and, and then, you know, you can say how stupid they are, but here's what I say to that, too, that, um, okay, they, they put out all this merchandise, uh, um, forget about the albums and all the music and videos, but, um, and people still buy this merchandise, I mean, who's a stupid one when somebody will buy, you know, Kiss My Ass toilet paper just because it says Kiss My Ass, you know? Right, that's pretty funny. And, um... Yeah, I- so I have all respect okay. in the world for these guys because, again, I was reading something recently where, you know, they, they grew up, you know, listening to the Beatles. Those were um, Gene and Paul's heroes. And um, they've actually now outsold the Beatles. Uh, um, they're one of the most, um, you know, um, best-selling American um, American music acts. They've outsold, the, um, you know, the, the Beatles, actually, which is just really amazing. I think it's actually, a t- I could be wrong, but I, I told this I was on a vacation and... Um uh, these these guys were arguing with me about Simon and Garfunkel and something, and <laughs> yeah. I was like, "Do you realize that Kiss? Because they were they they just couldn't they, they didn't understand how I could be in a Kiss tribute for one thing, mm-hmm. like, and then because you know most non Kiss fans have only heard Rock and Roll All Night. Yeah, um, I was made for loving you. Mm, maybe maybe uh, Detroit, maybe Detroit, but." Outside of like a few, you know, the big hits or whatever, you know, most people are like, they're still around, you know, kind of thing. Uh, or most non fans or whatever. Or there's people that aren't really into like that kind of music. So, but I said, yeah, you know, I'm pretty sure that they've outsold the Beatles, the combination of the Beatles and Elvis. And they were like, no way. And sure enough, we went to Wikipedia. Um, you know, everything's on the internet, so mm-hmm. I showed them. I was like, well, here's how many, you know, Simon and Garfunkel albums have sold to date. Here's how many Beatles have sold to date, and here's how much Kiss have sold to date. Yeah, yeah, and the, the amazing thing to me about that, you know, um, you know, as, as far as musicianship, they're not really... Um, same levels like, uh, say, a Steve Vai. They're not really technicians at their musician, you know, at their um, instruments. But, um, you know, Kiss has been pretty successful for a simple fact that, that look at what great songwriters they are. I mean, especially, you know, Gene and Paul that wrote the, you know, bulk of this stuff. I mean, um, you know, again, this they, they've had probably at least over 40 songs that, that are constantly played on the radio every day, you know, if, if not more. And um, any Kiss song you put on, pretty much, it, it's, they've got they've got hooks or catchy, um, e- even the heavier stuff. You know, it's, it's stuff you um, stuff you remember. And, and when, when they the fact that they've been doing it for over forty years, 
you know, um, it, it seems to be working to me, you know? Yeah, and, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's really supply and demand. I mean, it's, it's so funny to me that, you know, people don't get that people want another Kiss album. I mean, if I, you know, could get another Kiss album out of them that, mm. you know, like Revenge or uh, Destroyer to like the capacity of those songs, I mean, you know, that would be amazing, you know? Yeah, um, yeah, I mean, and, and so, it's, it's amazing too that they've got, they've got like a vault I've read, like it's so much, un they, they could just put out a, um, like a box set or something again, or, or, or even just a couple CDs of, of all this great unreleased material they've got, um, you know, but it, it just, it just amazes me that these guys, you know, they're just such uh, great songwriters, and, and to me that, that's, that's what, um, when you compare a band like Kiss and a lot of other bands, um, you know, that's why a lot of bands, you know, you, you might have the best looking front man, but if you guys don't have the songs and, you know, you don't have songs that got hooks and people can remember, you're not going to go too far. Yeah, uh, I agree. So, let me ask you this. What was your favorite part of the movie? Um, I, I got to say that um, I, 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 my favorite part was actually where they actually um, hooked up with the Scooby-Doo gang and, um, and, and, and I, I kind of like um, when the mystery was, you know, solved, obviously, because um, it kind of um, kind of brought me in for a loop. I mean, I, it, it um, I was thinking somebody else was, you know, the guilty party, and and ended up being a, uh, somebody different than what I thought originally. Oh man! Well, I gotta say, my favorite part is the Paul and the Paul Stanley and Daphne kind of like flirt. Oh yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Flirting. I mean, that was such a crack up because it's like you know, that, that was like really funny. I thought that was really cool. And then, you know, I, I just I love the fact that they can really that they don't take themselves too seriously and they can be really funny. Like, you know, like Gene like licking Scooby Doo or whatever. I mean, that's yeah. just like that's everything you want to see out of like. You know, a band that doesn't take themselves too seriously. Yeah, you know, it's yeah, it's interesting you bring that up because because uh, again, um, as we sit here talking, I'm looking at the back cover of this, and it has a picture of Gene Lick and Scooby Doo, as you just brought up. And you know, you know, I know some other bands that maybe take themselves more serious. They might get some oh, what what are you, you know, is this a gay thing or what? And there's there's none of that because again, this film is just meant for nothing to be anything else but fun, you know, for, for KISS fans and stuff. And, and I think it's cool, too, because it, it brings together the Scooby-Doo world and the KISS world, and so maybe somebody that's a Scooby-Doo fan knew nothing about KISS is going to now find out, oh, KISS, they're a rock band. I want to go check out their music or, um, you know, and vice versa. And, and I, I think it's cool, too, that it kind of, um, the Scooby-Doo gang, too, it kind of humanizes them, the fact that, okay, oh, wow, okay, the Scooby-Doo gang... They're, one of their favorite rock groups is Kiss. Oh wow, you know, because a lot of times you watch Scooby Doo cartoons and they're just kind of based around whatever mystery they're trying to solve, and, and they don't even. Um, so, so in this one, you kind of think, okay, well, we we learned something that they're, you know, a fan of or something else that they have going, you know, that they're um, that brings their friendship together besides just solving these mysteries. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, that's you know, that's, I don't know. I just it's so funny that. You know, it's, you're right, it's like, I, I've seen Scooby-Doo with Batman and Robin before, yeah, yeah. and some other, like, oh, even, kind of thing. so, to, to me, it's just like another superhero, I mean, yeah. it's like, you're with, a, you're with superheroes uh, solving a mystery, and I thought that was really cool, and, you know, the placement of the songs, I mean, everything was, I mean, I can't, like, overstate it, like, everything was done so well, like, and anyone that's not a fan would still enjoy it. I mean, it's really good. Yeah, I mean, I mean, that's the thing too. Is is you know, you could be somebody just into Scooby Doo and, and know nothing about Kiss and watch a movie and, and, and you, you know it doesn't it doesn't Kiss being it doesn't take away from it. it. If anything, it adds to it. And and I again, I think that's the cool thing bringing the two worlds together. Now I've seen it. I seen it done successfully, like with the Simpsons when they have other rock acts. Like I seen the Simpsons when they when they had the Who, you know. But um. You know, aside from the Simpson, I mean, this this is the only thing I've really seen that close where bringing a rock a rock group into a cartoon really um, really worked, and and I, I um, it worked so good that I I'd love to see them you know maybe do a part two or something or a follow up. Oh yeah, well I mean 
I think if it does well, or if it did well, I don't know if it did well. But, yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, what that was so good. Uh, and yeah, I hope I hope you're right. I mean, I hope they keep going with that. You know, it, it's so cool that like when they pop when they pop up on Family Guy or you know any other. Of, I think they had been on Scooby Doo actually before in like an episode. Well, actually, I, I think I'd seen one. I seen one years ago, and I think the, the main difference yeah. between this one and that one was it and the other one Gene was just in and they didn't even refer to him as like um, Gene Simmons I think they referred to him as the demon or something like that um, okay which, which, which is kind of interesting and, and um, like you said too I remember them now a couple of years ago doing Family Guy but I, I really dug the Scooby Doo thing for simple fact that it was more of a, like just a 30 minute spot you know um, they, they actually had a full feature length um, you know dedicated de- dedicated to them whereas um, you know it, it's interesting too because I don't know if you remember like in the early 90s um, Gene actually pr- produced this film um, called Detroit Rock City which um, sure. which it was kind of a cool little project but but what I didn't dig about it was I thought it would have been cool at least to have Gene and some of you know some of the Kiss guys in it but instead they got they got like a, a Kiss tribute band, um, I think called Hotter Than Hell or something. I'm not sure where they're from, and um, and, and again, um, I, I thought, no. uh, and I, I, yeah, I'm yeah. Pretty sure that that's the real guys in there. I no, mean, I had to go back. I, I had to go back and um, no, but but I've actually read stuff online where because um, because if you remember, uh, Detroit Rock City is based on kind of what you know Detroit Rock City the song based on these these Kiss fans going to concert and and. You know, they get in an accident. Somebody gets killed along the way. But um, no, no, I'm um, I'm pretty sure. And I'm gonna, when we get done doing this, just to confirm that I know what I'm talking about. I'm gonna go online. But I I remember reading. I think you got the wrong movie. <laughs> but I remember reading that um, it was not the actual Kiss guys that they um, and there was some controversy about that because he he produced the movie. Um, but um, the fact that it was somebody else dressed up as Kiss, it was like a Kiss tribute band. No, I don't think so, bud. Well. But, uh, uh, I knew a guy, I know, there's a guy in Vegas that actually was Paul Stanley's stand-in, actually, uh-huh. um, that set up a shot for him, but, um, but that's for the last, but yeah, I don't think so, I mean, they were running, um, yeah, I kind of knew some people working on the film, too. Hey. So, you might want to double check that. Yeah, I like it. Uh, I'll crack my... Let me see. Actually, let's see. We got... I got it right here, but Wikipedia, we can look this up real quick. <laughs> well, uh, while you're looking it up, let's, let's talk about um, Role Models. Have you ever seen that movie, Role Models? No, I haven't. T- tell, tell me a little bit about that, because I haven't heard of that. Okay, so, this... That would be great. That, that would have been... We should have tied this all in as, like, one big Kiss Media package. Because, oh, basically, uh, the filmmaker... Okay, okay. Okay, now, now, now let me ask you, because I've never heard of this role model. Um, is this something that's available on DVD, do you know? Oh, sure, yeah. It's, it's, um, it's uh, what's the guy's name? Um, sh- oh, gosh, I forgot his name. Okay, well, I'll to, yeah, <laughs> well. looks like Ben Affleck. <laughs> oh, wow. And uh, he's in the movie. And um, Elizabeth Banks is in the movie. So it's, oh, and um, the chick from Glee, um, the gym teacher from Glee is in it. Oh, gosh, I forget. Oh, okay, okay, okay. And uh, it's hilarious. I mean, it's one of the best. You know what? Since you sent me Scooby Doo, I should send you role model. So oh. give me your address, and I'll send you role model. Okay, I'll, yeah, I'll email, I'll email you that, and, and um, just as soon as we uh, wrap this up. But um, <laughs> wow, wow, that, that's interesting. Well, okay, well, um, I got some homework because um, I'm gonna I'm gonna um, look that up because I'm not sure. I, I remember reading some about a Kiss tribute band, but uh, maybe maybe I was mistaken, and I'll um. If so, I'll, I'll be sure to we talk we talk about that when we do the next um, interview, Rocco. So, um, 
So I guess before I let you go, I, I really enjoyed talking about all this. Before I let you go, um, so, so um, have you guys actually, the Kiss Crusaders, have you per- done your first show yet, or will that be ha- on Halloween? Well, it's on Halloween in, te- in Texas, so we'll be out of town. But uh, we actually, our first show together was Campland, but we hadn't had the name yet, so uh-huh. we hadn't like decided on the name. So, um, but yeah, it's pretty exciting. I mean, I'm ex- we're working on uh, learning new songs. So, it's, and when I say new songs, of course, I mean old kiss songs. Uh-huh. <laughs> so, uh, like I think Parasite's back in the mix. Um, well, I want, I really want to do all American band, but um, or all American man. I'm sorry, but uh, but what what I really liked that we played as co-ed. Um, I'll rub her all I can. I mean, I I never really got into that song until we started playing it with co-ed, and it is really good. Do you know that song? On the first album of the oh, 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 actually, Love Her All I Can. Um, well, I, I got to correct you. I know that's that's actually on uh, the third album, Dress to Kill. And, oh, okay. and interestingly enough, I don't know if you know this, but that had actually um, been a song that they had originally done in Wicked Lester. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah, it's really funky. And, you know, it's funny, like, Gene usually kind of gets the funky songs. Yeah. Like, I think Dr. Love has, you know, some underlying um, Ask, I was curious, um, you know, talking about that. Have you ever uh, performed a song, She? I, you know what? It's funny. I have never done She. And that was one of those things where when I used to, I think I saw Kiss Tribute one time, uh-huh. and they did She, and I watched the audience kind of cringe. Like, uh, it's, it's funny how different, you know, it depends on the crowd, I think. uh uh-huh. Because, you know, my philosophy is more like, I like the upbeat, the pop, the, anything that gets people dancing, uh-huh. you know, and, and, you know, most of that time, the hardcore Kiss fans are not really dancing people. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, okay. Um, so, you know, I just, I, I want the crowd to have a good time, so I like the crowd pleasers. Uh-huh. I don't know. If, but, you know, funny is, um, Ray, uh, uh, Randy and I, we've been in Kiss tributes off and on since... 2010, and Come On and Love Me is probably one of our top five kiss songs of all time. Probably my top three, like my favorite kiss wow. song. Wow, wow, wow. Um, and every time we've ever played it, and we tried it in different places in the set, and it just it just seemed like it never reached the I don't know if it, it's just the way we play it, yeah. or, uh, but yeah, I, just, I felt like there was no connection with it, and it's like one of our favorites, so we kind of cut it from our set. Well, um, and I, I got to ask you, being that you have the two different uh, Kiss tributes, um, like, uh, will Kiss Crusaders, will you guys be playing a set list of um, songs th- th- from um, throughout Kiss's um, entire career, or will you be doing just a certain area, or a certain era, rather? I think that, I think the, the idea is, um, well, since we're going to be doing the Uh-huh. Um, like newish, 
Yeah. It, it, it was kind of new to me. So I kind of, I kind of pick up around, I would say, like, Rock and Roll Over is probably my favorite. Oh, yeah, we talked about we that. We talked about that before, yeah. So kind of, yeah, I kind of start there. And um, the first three, I never really got into the first three albums. Yeah. Even though we play, you know, we play Pierce, Strutter, uh, we play, like, almost the entire first album, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We play, Wow. Now, now, now I got to ask you, um, how did you hook up with Larry Hampton? I know um, your drummer, Raleigh, has played with him, but, um, you know, he's one. I, I got to ask you, how does he do his Ace Frehley? Because I know, I know he's played, like, with uh, Mick Adams and the Stones, and he plays with um, Kenny McCaff, who, who does Elton, which is kind of, you know, a different type of um, music. So um, what, um, what's it like for him singing lead in that? I mean, um, how, how's he been uh, as far as you... you, you, you know, Larry Hampton is probably the best backup singer in the world, maybe. But it's not the world. <laughs> uh -huh. I mean, he definitely can pull off bass. Yeah, yeah. But between him, Raleigh and, and Larry, I mean, they sing like angels. <laughs> <laughs> angels in a devil band. Now, um, I'm just kidding. And, uh, you know, um, Larry is just, an incredible guitar player. I mean, no ma you could put anything in front of him that you have with guitar, and he would make it work. And, and I imagine so, the fact that him and um, Raleigh playing these other bands together must make it yeah. that much funner and easier for them to, um, you know, play together. The fact that they've got that history. I think so. Yeah. I mean, they're a great team, and uh, to watch them work. I mean, they are. Absolutely. Definitely the most professional um, team that I've ever played with, for sure. And, you know, I mean, Raleigh, you know, um, I had, I've had a chance to um, interview him once before, and, you know, he's just an amazing guy. I mean, when you consider, too, um, what an amazing talent he is, I mean, um, you know, and the fact that, okay, here's a guy that he can he can uh, get the makeup and look and sound like Peter Chris. He, he, he also is able to look dead on like Keith Moon and his Who tribute of any and then he um, plays the role of the drummer in um, Kenny Metcalf's band. I mean these are all different type you know of drummers and um, and, and he I mean he's really got the act down if you know what I mean. He, he's one of these guys besides being a great musician you know if it, if it came to him you know playing one of these roles in a movie or something man he, he'd have the part down. Yeah I mean he, he is his exceptional like um view of detail, I guess. I don't know how to say it, but like, he puts a lot of effort into the detail. And not only is he doing all that, but he's actually playing on, you know, former Kiss drum set. I'm not sure if we got that. Oh, I'm not sure. Oh, no, no. I don't on that. Wow. Yeah, wow. He's got a, um, <laughs> he's got the drum set from the Kiss residency in Las Vegas about a year ago or so. Wow, how cool is that? <laughs> and, and you know, do you know how he got his hands on that? I mean, um... Oh, Mr. DeVore gets his hands on a lot of things. Oh, that's cool, that's cool. <laughs> so, um, he, he has, I mean, you can talk to him about it. Yeah, I mean, yeah. That's probably a good thing to, and, uh, and talk to Larry as well if you can, but... Oh, I, I love um, that, yeah. But, yeah, he, um, Raleigh really goes for it, man, and he's always looking for a great deal, and... Um, that drum set is incredible. I mean, it's definitely, it lights, I mean, if you've seen the videos that's from us from Camp Land or whatever, uh -huh. that, that thing is the star of the show, really. I mean, wow, wow. It, it flashes, it, I mean, it comes with its own, like, you have to plug it in, basically. <laughs> so, um, and, you know, when Ace is doing uh, Shock Me, the blue light is on, and when, you know, uh, uh, you know, it, everybody's had their own light on the drums, you know, so it's really neat. It's just really neat. Wow, yeah. wow. Well, once again, Rocco, my friend, has been great talking to you. Before I let you go, um, one last thing I want to ask you about the Kiss Crusaders is, um, do you guys have a, a Facebook page or any uh, official website up yet? We don't. I probably should have, I should have waited until we had well we, we can we can well i'm kind of glad you announced it today because for a simple fact 
Uh, maybe by the time the interview does get posted, it'll be up. But, but um, I know you've been talking to me about this project for quite a while, and, and the hardest part was um, just coming up with a name. So I, 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 I'm glad at least here you got that part down. And um, and then maybe um, once you get what I'd like to do is once you get the Facebook page up, maybe we could um, do another one of these things, talk more in detail about the new band. And I'm going to try to. Um, I think it'd be cool to, um, uh, like I said, maybe uh, talk with uh, Raleigh and Larry and, and get there get their input on this, and then maybe when uh, you guys get your official Paul, I can talk to him, but um, it, I'm, I'm really glad to see that you're going forward with this, because I, I think the guys you got in the van are, you know, just really um, are, are going to be a natural fit for what you guys are doing. Yeah, it's, it's pretty exceptional to, and you know, it's just so, so much fun to, like, be in a band with, like, guys that are super pro, I mean, I, I feel like a student again, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, I feel like I'm learning again, and uh, just, yeah, and, and being a part of, like, having actual kiss, um, uh, kiss stuff on stage with us. I mean, that's yeah. really neat, you know, it just feels... Like, uh, I mean, I mean, for him, you know, for him, I mean, that's got to be such an incredible feeling, you know. Uh, you know, here you're portraying, you know, a part of Peter Chris, and you got the guy's uh, actual, you know, drum set that he played on, you know, a couple of years back. It's got to be, you know, ultimate feeling. <laughs> that's pretty cool. And then he's, he also has a Punisher, um, Gene Simmons uh, Punisher amplifier. Wow. That he lets me borrow. Wow. <laughs> for the show. Um, I don't know. You know what it, uh, it? It's funny because it didn't. I don't remember it coming out. You know, I look on the internet and there's barely um, any press on it or ads for it or anything. Um, well, I, I think yeah, it I think sounds great. Yeah. Uh, I love playing through it. Um, I think from what yeah, I remember, yeah. he he put that out originally. Um, I think back in '92, Time Revenge was um, coming out because I remember him. Um, you know, Gene doing these ads with this guy, um, Spyro, who's like a Gene lookalike, and he was Gene's assistant at the time, and, um, you had Gene, like, um, you know, um, in his revenge, uh, get up, and then you had this guy, uh, made up as Gene in the classic Kiss makeup, and I do remember that back from 92 or 93, and then I think a couple of years back, they re, uh, they re reissued the Punisher. Well, I always feel bad, I always tell Raleigh, like, ah, oh, just don't let me borrow this, because, like, after the show, you'll look on the amp, and it's like, I got blood all over it, <laughs> I got, like, like fire power, powder all over it, you know, so it's always covered in goo after it. I'm like, this is, you know, this is, like, a really cool, like, amp, and uh, it, it wasn't a Kiss amp, I mean, they didn't own yeah. it that we know of, but, like, yeah. Eric Singer owned just owned the drum set that we're playing yeah. now, and that's just really cool. Well, well, it, it, and you know, um, you know, getting back to the, these iconic Kiss figures, that's why, like, um, I, I got to tell you that Gene Simmons, um, from a minute I got into Kiss, he was always my favorite member because um, I, I guess um, you know I liked the way he played the bass, I liked the way he sang, but um, I thought he was the coolest guy. That, oh, this is a guy that breathes fire. This is a guy that spits blood, man. Uh, you know, out of all four four guys, I, I thought his character was you know. Um, you know, Vanita. So, you know, again, when you, when you talk about them doing these movies and animated features, it just goes to show you that Kiss is so much more, you know, than just a band. Well, you know, it's funny. Uh, I never, like, before 2010, I would have never thought that I'd be in a Kiss tribute. And when the reunion happened, I was all about Ace. So I have, like, Ace stand-ups. I had, I thought, you know, of course, it's, his solo album was the best, so that's the one that I listened to constantly. Um, I just, I loved Ace. I loved mm -hmm. Ace, really. And it's funny that I, I mean, I, I never would have saw me doing Gene, ever. Oh, wow. It just happened accidentally, and because of Randy, uh, because of um, our guitar player that um, I started with, who was Ace, and... Uh, and he is now our John Five in our zombie band. And how's he work? How's he working out with in that band? Has he played his first gig with you guys? Oh no! They, they um, Randy started the band. He uh, he was yeah. They, they he started. I mean, they oh started. okay. Yeah, I I I was missing or I misunderstood because um um I um I recently interviewed um your former bandmate Jason from Kiss to Live and um he was he was explaining that um. That I guess he left their band to, to do the zombie thing full time. So um, I, I guess that was a misunderstanding on my part. <laughs> yeah, they they um yeah he actually started it and 
Jack. Oh, okay. Uh, his, him and Nicholas and um, Steve, uh, they they started it and kind of got me on board. But um, but yeah, I mean the zombie band is well, we can talk about it later. But yeah, yeah, yeah. It's so much fun, and we have such a huge stage show, and we finally get to do our big big show, like a big show on uh, the 29th of October which will be in Riverside at the Municipal And, and can, you, can you tell us a little bit more about that? Because um, you were talking to me on the phone the other day about it, and, and I, you said it was some kind of um, Rob Zombie film festival. So um, do you guys play before or in between the movies? Yeah, they're going to run the Rob Zombie movies, um, House of a Thousand Corpses and Devil's Rejects. And then I, th- I think we're playing either in between the movies or after the movies but um but it's a huge stage and we have a huge production we have a robot we have the dancers we have a gorilla we have um the devil chases me around the stage we have uh the the universal monster banners yeah. uh it's just so fun um all kinds of other like funny little things that we do that you know we're, we're trying to do the show that he does on like yeah. a smaller scale, an affordable scale. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, um, so, but man, this guy is, like I said, like in the zombie interview, the drummer, Nicholas, uh, he creates our, co- I mean, he sells our costumes, he creates the, all the, um, all of our props, and he's just like a true artist, and he programs, like we use a lot of sound effects in, in the show, because, you know, Rob Zombie songs have a lot, like, of like horror sound effects, and yeah. he programs yeah, in fact, in fact, when I interviewed you about the Zombiewood band, you you were sharing with me that um, you know, you were aware of who Rob Zombie was, but you were, didn't were, weren't really much of a fan until you started um, until you joined the Zombiewood band. And um, I was curious since um, joining Zombiewood, if you've had a chance to check out any of his movies because he's quite the movie director. Um, and what what do you think of some of his films? You had a chance to see any of those? Oh yeah, no, I, I was always I think I said I was kind of always a. a Fan. Huge fan, yeah. You become but a bigger I fan. Got more into the music. Yeah. And got the, you know, I just thought that was really good stuff. But yeah, the one I've only seen one or two, if you count the live. I have um, the Zombie Horror Picture Show, which is his live show. Okay. Um, but his movie, um, the movie that I have seen is The Devil's Devil's Rejects, and I thought it was great. I mean, you know, I'm a pretty easy to please. But yeah, yeah. It's really scary and it's really dark. And it's really well done. Wow. Um, he reminds me a lot of, like, it, you know, like Quentin Tarantino. Yeah. But the horror side of it. Like, you know, if Quentin Tarantino wrote horror, it would be of this. So, um, I, haven't seen, I haven't seen any of the other films. I think there's, like, four other films. Three yeah. or four other, but... Uh, and I think there's a new one coming out or something, but... Okay, um, okay. But, yeah, I mean... I, I really, oh, and this was a, this was a huge compliment. I was down on Melrose, and there's a, there's a store there that sells, um, like rock and roll gear or whatever. Uh-huh. I walked in, and the lady there is actually Rob Zombie's designer. Wow. <laughs> I was looking around the store, and I go, that looks like Rob Zombie, that looks like Rob Zombie. Uh-huh. And, and, uh, I, so I found out, yeah, I started talking to her, and she said, oh yeah, I designed all their clothes, and, and I was like, wow, go in the zombie tribute band. I showed her the pictures. And the pants that I'm wearing were ma- uh, replicated by Nicholas. And she was blown away. The designer of Rob Zombie's actual costumes. Uh, costumes. Wow, wow. She said, she said, I can't, no one's ever replicated my work before. That is amazing. Wow. So, and then I said, what's it going to cost me to get that jacket? And she's like, I will never make you anything that I already made for someone else. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, like, oh, oh, yeah. And, and let me ask you, Rocco, because a couple of days ago I seen a picture. I think it was you and Gene um, at, at some restaurant. Was that was that an old picture? That's something from um, more recently. Uh, it's probably about a year and a half old or so. Okay. Uh, Randy and I and Nicholas and I went to Rock and Bruce. Oh, we, you and I went to the same restaurant. We yeah, yeah, yeah. Pizza or okay. We need to do that again, by the way. That'd be fun. Okay. Um, Anytime in the area, just hit me up. Um, but yeah, 
So, uh, yeah, he was really nice. We, uh, I was in the night before, and the guy said, oh, yeah, she's going to be here tomorrow. And I called Randy and Nick. Or, I can't remember how it went. Anyway, right. he was super nice. He signed my uh, backspace, and I had it, like, lacquered onto the back of my guitar. Yeah. So that's genius. But, yeah, he's so nice. I mean, he's just, uh, that's what blows me away. Like, people that say he's a jerk or whatever. Yeah. Actually, if I could just slip this story in there, um, actually, when you and me, uh, you, you brought up that we'd um, we, we'd met once at the Rock and Brews that you're talking about in Torrance, and as we were having dinner, uh, and a friend of mine had joined us, um, um, we were talking about your previous band, Kissed Alive, and there was um, there, there were some people sitting at the very next table, and they heard us talking, and they're like, "Wow, you're in that band," and, and they got talking, they got talking about um, you know going to one of the the band's uh, previous shows, and, and it was just amazing to me that. Here, you know, I'm, uh, you know, I'm having dinner in this Kiss-themed restaurant with a guy that uh, pays tribute to Gene Simmons, um, and, and um, people that, you know, have actually been to one of your shows. They were just sitting right next to us. I mean, just what a small world. <laughs> yeah, that was pretty funny. Yeah, yeah. That was pretty funny. Yeah. Well, <laughs> well, um, yeah, it's, it's funny. You never know who a Kiss fan is going to be, I guess. And see, that that's the difference to me between Kiss and any other band. I mean, I, I mean, again. Um, you could get a Kiss fan, you know, from the 70s, you know, some, somebody who's been a fan all the way through, and, and, you know, just like you and me, we could talk for, we could talk for hours about any, you know, about a Scooby-Doo movie or <laughs> the Kiss was in or, uh, you know, a particular Kiss album. Uh, I mean, it, it really is, you know, the Kiss Army, I mean, as a, as a, um, as a Kiss fan base has kind of dubbed themselves. Uh, I mean, you, you don't really find that with any, you know, too many other bands. I mean, you know, you get the Black Sabbath fan together and, and they're going to argue, you know who's a better singer, Ozzy or, or Dio? But um, Kiss fans are really more like a religion, if you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, we gotta go to a game, man. What's the hold up? Okay, well. I'm trying to get you to go to a game. You won't come. Well, uh, well, I promise the next the next time. Just um, I, I happened caught me at a bad time when I had somebody coming from out of town. But um, yeah, we'll, we'll definitely make a point to do that. I, I would I would love that. Um, so, do you know if they're going to continue to play? I've heard, I've heard um, rumors that um, that the Kiss, the LA Kiss, was over. Do you know is that going to continue to go? Uh, I don't think so. I think they're planning on going around. Oh, that's I cool. Mean, that's cool. If they don't, I'll, it'd be news to me. But that's cool. Um, yeah, I mean, I think they're going to continue to play. I don't know if they're going to continue to go Yeah. Great. I mean, I mean, just I, I gotta tell people. I mean, you've actually been to the games, but just p pictures and things I've seen online and even on the, you know, local TV news when when, they, when they've um, you know covered it. I mean, again, it's so much more than just a football game. I mean, I, I've heard they had they've had guys like Lemmy, you know, um, do the coin toss, and they've had they've had bands like Steel Panther come out and play before the game. Yeah. I mean, it it really is more than just. It's like the ultimate rock show, if you will, and you get to go, you know, see a uh, see a football game. You know, it's just um, again another just another experience you get from being a Kiss fan. That again, so, something um, most typical um, rock bands you don't get with. That's <laughs> true. Well, well, well Rocco, my friend, I, I tell you what, you go watch Role Models in uh -huh. Detroit Rock City, and we'll do that next time. I will, I will do that. So get, give me a couple of weeks to do that, and I will um, get in touch. And um, I'll be sending you my address and, and that. And also, um, I, I think I'm going to be able to make it to the um, Rob Zombie Film Festival. So um, I'll talk to you about that. Um, you know, um, I'll send you a little email about that uh, down the line. But thanks so much, Rocco, for doing this. Um, I, every time I really have fun doing this, you're, you're, you're really a great 
guy to talk because, like I said, you're just as much a Kiss fan as I am, and uh, you're a guy that's actually kind of living the life, so um, you're a perfect <laughs> one to talk talk to. So um, you have a nice day, my friend, and, and I promise I'll be in touch. Okay, later, bye. Okay, take care. Bye-bye.